Hi, Mary. Thanks for stopping by the Sim Ki Boon Institute. You just gave a major address at the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, the speech was on banking culture. The conference was on banking for the common good, and I focused on how you can achieve those goals either at the central bank or at private sector banks by focusing on your culture. And when you focus on your culture, what you really want is to clear the way to let the people who work for you do the right thing. Because people know what to do, but sometimes we regulate and put so many rules on them that you can't really breathe and you can't actually instinctually act. So we need regulations, of course, in central banking. We need rules, but we also need space, space to do the right thing, use our best judgment, be ourselves, and that will achieve banking for the common good. We're about to go downstairs and have a fireside chat with some SMU students. What advice would you give students today who are thinking about entering the field of economics? The main piece of advice I want to tell people is don't get discouraged when you don't see people who look exactly like you. Because we want our profession to be different than it currently is. And we need each and every person who's thinking about economics to do economics. The other thing I would say is when you're training yourself and you're thinking about the field, remember that ultimately economics is about people. It's about how people organize themselves, how they trade with each other, and if you think about your career, it has so many different facets, but you always come back to what am I doing to help people, people live their best lives. Women continue to be very underrepresented in our field of economics generally and in central banks specifically. Last year, the Bank of France did a study and counted heads and showed that only about 6% of central banks globally are headed by women. In Asia, we do have our second female central bank governor in Malaysia, but generally the Asian region also lags behind. What can we do now to try to correct this long-standing situation? We're not going to have a single answer to get this big job done. Three things that we can do. The first is central banks around the globe have to commit to making diversity and inclusion a priority. If you think about what central banks are charged with, we're charged with representing the people we serve. And if we don't include everybody, what happens is we don't think of the best solutions and a lot of times we don't even know where the problems lie because we don't have everyone at the table. So central banks have to make a commitment. The second thing that we have to do is that universities have to make a commitment to help individuals who look different than current central bankers, women in particular right now, but also people of all different ethnicities and races and where they are in the income distribution. Universities have to commit to making central banking part of what they think people can do. I once sat next to a woman who's at Wellesley and she said, now that I've seen you, I think I can go back to my home country, Swaziland, and maybe I can be a central banker. So just by example, be out there, be talking. And then the third thing, and this is for every young person thinking about this, the central banks really work for the public good and participating in central banking is something that you will feel great about. You'll have a great career, but you'll also feel good about your work every day. So if we do those three things and everybody participates, I'm confident central banking will look different two decades, one decade from now, than it looks today.